What I have to say <clears throat> is relevant to the time we're living right now. Verse 4 of 2 Timothy chapter 2. And Father God, we thank you for your inspired word. Yeah. May it find a lodging place and bring forth fruit in people's lives. In Jesus' name, amen. No man that wars entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. Yes. Do I have any soldiers for the Lord in here? Yes. Then we cannot entangle ourselves in the affairs of this world system. Yes. I know you got a job. I know we live on the world and in, in our earth and everything, and we're around evil all the time, but you're different. You're different. Do not allow Satan to wear you down. So I learned that many years ago when I was going to college. If Satan can get the preacher through pride, money, and women, he'll wear you down over a period of years. Well, I got news for you, Mr. Devil. It's been 40 years you haven't worn me down yet. Amen. Now, I've been close. I've been close. The fact is I'm going to take a little breather in July. So we're not going to be having church on Sunday night, our live stream on Wednesday night. I'm going to the mountains. <laughs> Next August, when we start back up, I'm going to be using different speakers here on Sunday night. And I'm going to stay home in a fetal position for a while until <laughs> I regain my composure. Amen. So, you got vacations, God bless you, get stuff done around the house, amen, and uh, we'll be back to normal, whatever that is, in August, all right? Everybody understand? Amen. Don't come up to me after church, brother Randy, we have a church next Sunday night? No. <laughs> We're on spring break, maybe it's summer break, is that what it is? No, we don't do these things to get away from God. We do these things to draw closer. This is what I'm trying to get to you. When Jesus wanted to hear from the Father, he got alone, yes, right. solitude upon the mountain. Same way as Moses. Yep. Elijah got in the cave. Of course, he wanted to die. But then the Lord revealed himself to him when Moses was in the cave. Yep, right. We need to get away from Facebook. Get away from the ruckus in the world system. And if you're intertangled and intertwined with the affairs of this world and you don't have any victory, what do I say? Back up and just take a look at it. Well, look at it, would you? Just look. <laughs> would you look at it? So, don't allow Satan to entangle you up in the riffraff of the cares of this life. He's good at it, but Jesus is better in keeping us out of it. Amen. Now we're going to get right to it. God desires to communicate with us. Amen. And sometimes we need to be still and find a place of tranquility. Tranquility. Amen. Let somebody else babysit the children for a while and just get alone by yourself for a reason. Hebrews 1 2. Someone asked the question, well, why didn't God speak to me? Well, Hebrews 1 2. Let's get rid of two. We've got a lot of scripture to look at today because the scripture is the final authority. Amen. Hebrews 1 1. God, who at sundry times and divers manners spake in times past unto our fathers by the prophets. Then the next verse says, Has in these last days spoken to us by a son. So God's already spoken. Whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Amen. So the question is, is to find out what God spoke. Amen. Now, we're always looking for God to speak to us in an audible voice, and He rarely does that. He can. Usually it's the inward witness, uh, uh, you know, things like that. But He really doesn't, He's not required to speak to us again. He's already spoken to us in the Word. 
However, he does speak to us, confirming the word from time to time. Amen. So I want to talk about today how to communicate with God. First thing, if you go out there and hug the tree on the left, you'll not hear a thing from God. Now the tree on the right is a little better. But you still won't hear from God. How many want to know how to communicate with God? Well, first off, He desires to communi communicate with us more than we desire to communicate with our God. Amen. Yeah. Isaiah 55, 6. Isaiah 55, 6. Seek the Lord while He may be found. You know, He's available for all of us today. Amen. But people don't know how to seek after their Creator. Well, it's through Jesus alone. And call upon Him while He's near. Oh, He's not far from us. Fact is, He's here today. Yes. Now, it's invisible. His Spirit is invisible. The Holy Spirit's invisible. He can show up in a, a tangible, literal way if He wanted to, but that wouldn't require too much faith, now would it? See, you've got to understand this, everybody. Our spirit can communicate and commune with God. Amen. Now, if you're not born again, you can't do that. Right. But once the sins are taken care of through the blood of the Lamb, then we can boldly approach the throne of grace to find help in time of trouble, and we can communicate and commune with the Father God by the Spirit. That is, if you're born again. Now, the flesh part of us is connected to this world, and it communicates to us to the flesh all the time. Yes. Negative all the time. Right. The soul is the decision center that chooses whom we're going to obey, the flesh or the spirit. Right. Yeah. Amen. I choose the spirit. Reject the flesh. I know it gives us trouble, but then God knows about that. He's given the Holy Spirit to help us to overcome what we can't overcome without Him. Amen. Amen. So we need to call upon the Lord. Now in Exodus 25 and verse 22, the Lord is talking to, to Moses and He said, There I will meet with you. Wouldn't it be a great thing to personally meet with God Almighty? If, if God was on Mount Opossum out here. <laughs> and there was thunderings and lightnings and earthquakes. And would you go up if you knew that God was up there? Yep. Yes. I would go. But I'd be sure I was washing the blood. Yes. <laughs> yes. Amen. I would go. And one day we will see the Father. Face to face. Amen. Until that time, we walk by faith. The Holy Spirit's here to help us. And uh, we have the Word of God. We have the church. Amen. We have the church Amen. to help us. So there I will meet with thee and will commune with thee from above the mercy seat. Between the two cherubim. So the cherubim were looking down on the Ark of the Covenant, the mercy seat. They were looking at one thing, the blood. Right. The blood was on top of the mercy seat. That's all God looks at. Amen. Amen. Now the broken commandments were contained in the, in the Ark of the Testimony, but the lid was closed. Right. Shout somebody. Amen. God does not look at the broken commandments that all of us have broken. Amen. He could, but He doesn't. You know why? Because the blood speaks. Yeah. Well, thank God. Not only have we been covered by the blood, if you're a Christian, you've been washed by the blood. What sins are you talking about? Amen. The blood allows us communion. Revelation 3.20. In the New Testament, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. This is Jesus. We take, it, we take this to be not only the church, but individually, each person's heart. He says, I stand at the heart's door and knock, and if any man hear my voice, and open the door. So everybody say, I've got to open the door. 
We trust the Lord. Open the door. We open the door and invite him in. He said, I will come into him and I will sup with him and he with me. I will sup with him. I will dine with him. We will fellowship. We will commune with him and he with us. It's an individual thing. Most of us think we go to church on Sunday and we commune with God. That's true. But we need to commune with God through the week. Then when we come to church, guess what? Amen. We're really in communion with God then. Amen. It's a corporate thing then. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Fact is, the last day revival will be individual, not collective. Amen. Did you get that? Amen. You. And me. It's an individual thing. God will reveal himself to us individually. You'll not have to go to a church service to hear from God. You can hear from God on Blue Monday and Terrible Tuesday. Yes. <laughs> Praise God. Point number one. God desires to com say commune. When you're communing, you don't have to say a lot. God already knows. So how do we commune with God? How many wants to know? Well, the first thing is to understand that it's spirit to spirit. We commune with God spirit to spirit. That's what it means to be in the spirit. Amen. Amen. Commune, fellowship, share. Amen. You know, God has some things He wants to share with us. Yep. That's true. He doesn't share certain things with every one of His children. Just certain ones at certain times for reasons unknown. But we always go to God and commune. Uh, and you need to get alone, get away from the hustle and bustle of life. Yep. Get prayed through. Amen. And just simply rest in the grace of God and commune with the Spirit. Amen. You see, the real revival will come by fellowship with God. Amen. That I may know Him and the power of His resurrection, the fellowship of His sufferings being made conformable unto His death. That was Paul's desire, that I may know Him. The only way we can know our Father God is to commune with Him. God has some things He wants to share with us. Personal things. Sometimes the Lord's feelings is hurt. He wants to share. The deep, deep calls to deep. He wants to share things with us. One time he came to Abraham, he said, Abraham, shall I show you what I'm going to do? And they looked at the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. And Abraham said, will you destroy it for 50 righteous? Not for 50. And Abraham again, the Jew, was God. With 40, 30. But the point is, God didn't want to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Especially, He didn't want to harm Lot, whose soul was vexed every day. And so God purposely came to Abraham, knowing that Abraham was his friend and could commune with him. They were communing. And God wanted Abraham to intercede for Lot, so he wouldn't have to destroy Lot and his family in Sodom. That's right. So it is today. The Lord Jesus is in heaven communing with the Father God. For us, He will take us out before all hell breaks loose. Amen. That's called a rapture. Glory to God. Amen. But we need to commune with Him. Secondly, and this is where most believers fall by the wayside, His thoughts become our thoughts. 
Can you trust God with your mind? This mind is already in you that was in Christ. Philippians 2.5 Not going to be, not work it up to be, not by works or anything. Paul just said, let this mind be in you which is also in Christ. So how did Jesus think? He was thinking the word. Come on somebody. So we must come to a place in maturity Amen. Were that the thoughts that we, we, we pick up on in our mind are God's thoughts, not our thoughts all the time. And when you're really what I would call progressively sanctified to a point, whatever that might mean, is that you think like God. You don't have to pray about this and that. You just know the mind of God and the thoughts of God and you have conformed to the place that you think like Jesus. Can we trust God with our thought process? Now you know what wrong thoughts are. Don't turn me off when I'm preaching good. You know what wrong thoughts are. Throw them out. Reject them. Say, God, I don't want that. I'm getting rid of it in Jesus' name. And wait for his thoughts to come. Because Satan can put thoughts in your mind and make you think it was God talking to you. The devil is so slick, you can be sleeping at night and he can put thoughts in your subconscious mind the next day, next month, next year, that thought will float up and make you think you were thinking it. So if you don't know the Word of God, you're apt to be deceived and probably already are. Right. Because we're not thinking right. Isaiah 55, 9 now, Billy, please. How many would trust God with your thought process? Amen. I know it's, 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 it's a constant thing because we're always thinking something, aren't we? Except for Sunday morning. Most of you are blank. Like a deer looking in the headlights. You know? Actually, when you pray in the Holy Spirit, you give your mind a break. You give your thought process a break. You relax. This is the rest. With stammering your lips in another tongue while I speak unto this people. That you got to know the Word of God. Okay? And just simply believe it. Yes. Amen. That's all. Quit struggling and just believe it. As the heavens are higher than, than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And, well, God's thoughts is higher than our thoughts. Well, come up a notch. We can't know God's ways. It's His ways is past finding out, Brother Monty. What are we going to do? Well, grow. Yes. Amen. Throw down the baba <laughs> and grow up. I'm trying to grow. That's it. You're trying. you got to give up and let the grace of God have you. 100%. I asked Jesse this morning what a Christian was. And she said, well, that's a person that's sold out to God 100%. That's right. But what I'm looking for is this. A Christian is in Christ and he or she is in yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in Christ and he's in me. And that's what a Christian is. Nothing more. The only way the Holy Spirit could come in is you must accept what Jesus did on the cross for your salvation, accept His precious blood to wash you away your sins. He will give you the new birth freely, put your name in the book, and call you a son and a daughter that was not a son and a daughter. Amen. This is why Jesus came. Yep. Amen. Among a thousand other reasons. Number three. His will must become my will. See, most of you, you're strong-headed, strong-willed, stiff-necked. You remind me of a mule. <laughs> I know this one guy had a horse, and that horse was the craziest thing. 
He was on that horse, and that horse took off a run, and he couldn't stop him, and the bit wasn't working right. He pulled that horse's head around back here by the stirrup, and that horse is still running for a barbed wire fence. Well, what happened? That horse is smart. He ran up to that barbed wire fence and stopped and threw him over the fence. I'd shoot that horse. <laughs> I'd kill him dead. I can take dominion, praise God. But the Bible calls people stiff-necked. Well, I don't know about that, Brother Randy. Bless God, you know, I've been taught. You've been taught wrong, most of, the, most of you have. It's my job to deprogram you and then reprogram you with the Word of God. Amen. The Holy Spirit. So I believe in the teaching and preaching of the Word of God and the demonstration of the Holy Spirit, both, not just one. That's as good as you're going to get. We're not perfect, but we are forgiven and heading to heaven, and God's with us. Praise God. Amen. My will must become God's will. John 6, 38. Amen. So I'm talking about communion with God. This is why we're here. Right. He wants to live in us and commune with us. Communion, the definition, to share one's intimate thoughts. Our feelings with someone. Especially on a spiritual level. Amen. To feel in close contact with. So many people say, I wish I could get closer to God. Well, if He's in you, you don't understand. You can't get any closer to God than that. You said you're never leaving or forsake you. So you're not thinking right. Amen. John 6, 38. I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. This was the mind of, the, of, of Christ. He had to surrender his will as a human also. And take on the will of the Father God. That is the challenge today. For every one of us, no matter who you are, will you choose to do that? Amen. You must choose. Then God will help you. But don't resist because Jonah tried that and he wound up in the belly of a sea monster. Right. Like I always say, there's always something good to thank God for. When Jonah came out of that whale or whatever it was, and was placed on the beach, he could have come out the wrong end. <laughs> Always something to thank God for. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Well, I'll tell you. Then in John 5.30. John 5.30. I can't of my own self do nothing. Are you there yet? Are you there yet? Yes. All you know it all. Are you there? Yes. Have you learned enough to know you don't know anything? Yes. <laughs> uh, knowledge puffeth up. I can tell those people real quick. I can out my own self do nothing as I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. Our will must conform to the will of God. Yeah. Uh, you're going to be a miserable Christian the rest of your life. If God wants you to be a janitor, then purpose to be the best janitor that God has. Amen. Glory to God. Now in Matthew 26, 42... Amen. This is when Christ was in the garden and deep communing with God the Father. Amen. He went away again the second time and prayed and said, Oh, my Father, if this cup not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. Man, what a Savior. He knew the cross was staring him in the face. But he had to go. 
It was the Father's will. Because we were all heading to hell fast. If Christ would have failed, every person from Adam for all time and eternity would have went to hell. Because we couldn't save ourselves. God knew that. Don't tell me God doesn't love you. He gave his son for you and took your place on the cross. Someone said, well, I should have been crucified. No, it wouldn't have done any good. You had to be sinless. There was only one, and there's still only one, and he is the Lord Jesus Christ, and him alone. Praise God. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords, the only potentate. Praise God, and all forever will be so. So our will, have you surrendered your will to God yet? Well, I don't know what it is yet. Well, you need to go back here and learn what it means to be spirit to spirit. You're too worldly. You need to come out every now and then and separate yourself and hear from God with nothing but bread and water until you hear from God. Amen. Amen. I mean, how bad has it got to get before we'll begin to seek the Lord? It's bad overseas in Africa right now. I can tell you they've shut the churches down. The businesses are closed. People are, are locked down. There's no food. They're starving. Old people are crying. And the government don't care. And there's not one thing we can do for them. Folks, if we don't have revival, come on, give me an amen. It's going to hit this country. We're all the same. This coast along. Take care of our family, number one, nobody else. No, we got a big assignment. That's right. Actually, we are our brother's keeper. That's right. Now look, not only must our will conform to the will of God, our mind must also become his mind. Now I know this is somewhat supernatural, but uh, God is supernatural. 1 Corinthians 2.16, let's take a look at this one. Amen. The last part of this, but we have the mind of Christ. Everybody say it with me. We have the mind of Christ. This is how that I've learned how to follow God. One way. Is to know that when we're in the Spirit, you've got to figure out what that means. When we're in the Spirit, being led of the Holy Spirit, we do have the mind of Christ at that time. Actually, we have it all the time, but we're not conscious of it because we're connected to the world and Satan wants to stop what God wants to do. He can't do it, but he does try, doesn't he? So, how can I know that I have the mind of Christ? Well, first off, you must know the Spirit. So many churches don't want the Holy Ghost in the the congregation. Get out of there. You can't even have church without the Holy Spirit. He was sent on the day of Pentecost to help us. The Comforter. He's the power source. To know the Spirit before operating in the Spirit. So that's the problem with you charismatics. You want to operate in the Spirit, but you don't really know the Spirit. You don't know God's ways. Oh, you know God's acts, but you don't know God's ways. Big difference. You have to know the Holy Spirit before you can operate in the Spirit. You must know His voice before... Let me change that. We must know His voice before we can be led by the Holy Spirit. If you don't know what what voice is talking to you, then how do you know who's talking to you? When I was a kid, my mom would come to the back door and come and get supper before I throw it out to the dogs. And I knew exactly her voice. Amen. Amen.
one mind. Then the next thing. There must be a unity of the Spirit. Now, most of the church says this, well, we've got to have unity of the Spirit with everybody else. Now, wait a minute. That's right, but that's not the big picture here. We've got to have unity with God's Spirit. So this stuff's elementary, but it seems foreign to most people that go to church. They don't even know who God is. Oh, they're saved by faith, but they don't know Him. Now, it's one thing to be introduced to the Savior, but it's another thing to walk with Him. Well, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. That's right. First, uh, I mean, Ephesians 4, 3. So the way I want to look at this today, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. We need to endeavor to keep the unity of the Spirit. Stop there. My Spirit with God's Spirit. At all costs, I cannot allow myself to get contrary wise with the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the challenge. You can't do your own thing anymore. If you're a born again child of God, you don't have any rights. Jesus is your boss. He's the commander in chief. He gives the orders and you just say, yes, sir. And you don't argue about it. Because right. if you argue with him, you won't win and you're rebellious. Amen. Amen. I'm talking about communion with God, and some of you are hung up already on this. I haven't even got to the last point yet. <laughs> I want to keep the unity of the Spirit with God, the Holy Spirit, don't you? Yes. He is a friend that sits closest than a brother. Amen. Praise God. And the next thing is word for word. We need to begin to just say what God says yes. in the Scripture. So when somebody comes to you and says, well, what do you think about this? And what do you think about that? And there are people out there looking for God. They want help. They don't know where to go, who to trust. Don't say something like this. Don't say this. Well, I see it this way. Well, I, you're in trouble, Miss Lucifer. I, no, don't use I. It's we. My, my wife asked me, how come you're always saying we? Because it's, it, it's the Holy Spirit in me. I do not exist. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live yet now and I, but the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. I was already dead in trespasses and sins. When I came to Christ, I was resurrected to walk in newness of life. And now I'm not my own. I'm bought with a price. The Bible says, therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. How do we do that? Come in. I can tell when folks that come to church are not communion through the week. They're as cranky and as mean as a junkyard dog. <laughs> now I know half the church has gone on vacation fine come back in the spirit come back with some joy or your vacation meant nothing <laughs> amen get up on the mountain alone with God praise God hallelujah so we just need to agree with the scripture well the, so you tell people this don't tell them, well, I think this. It doesn't matter what you think. Tell them this. Well, the Scripture says. See, the Scripture says this. The Scripture says that. Yep. Amen. King James, please. The Scripture says. See, that's the final authority. See? doesn't matter your opinion. Amen. Amen. Everybody has a couple of opinions like two elbows, you know. Doesn't mean anything. My opinion means nothing. What's the Bible say? What's the final authority? Amen. We need to agree with that. So if you've got a problem, you find your answer in the Scripture and come into your agreement with that. Praise God. Something hits you through the week, the devil tries to take you out or destroy you or tear up your car or something or a sickness or something. 
Oh, devil, I'm more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. You got to quote the word. You got to know the word. That's my assignment to try to get the word in you. So it'll come out of you automatic. You won't have to pray about it and think about it. It's just there. It's kind of like preaching. I don't know what I'm going to say. The word just floats up and it's the, it's the word that comes out from time to time. See? That's what goes to your spirit. The flesh fights it all the way. I'm thirsty. It's too hot in here. Too cold. I've got chickens on. It's going to burn. You know, and the pizza. Oh, I'm hungry. And the baby's crying. All these distractions. Will you just step back and take a look at it? <laughs> and then this one. Vision for vision. All this stuff just, just come for me, to me by the Spirit when I was communing. Amen. So that's the way you get fresh word from heaven. You, you commune in the Spirit somewhere. Amen. Amen. Vision. John eight thirty eight. I told someone, I think it was this morning, maybe it was yesterday. Vision brings about provision. No vision, people perish. But when you catch and hold the right vision, now there's a collective vision and there's an individual vision. But if the individual visions are correct, it'll harmonize with everybody else in the congregation. Like, for example, when God says we've got a big work to do in Africa, build a radio station and get that building put up, soldier in the balance, guess what? That's what we're going to do. Well, praise God. God will provide and make a way where there is no way. Praise the Lamb of God. And He does, and He will, and that's the way that it works. Amen. You get in on that vision, and God's going to bless you. Yeah. Why? Because you, by faith, are upholding the vision that comes from the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 So find out where you belong. Oh, I can tell you right now, every one of you belong right here in this church to a further notice. Amen. 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 Just take the bit out of your mouth. You're not going anywhere. <laughs> Quit letting Satan spur you to go somewhere else to get a word. Oh, there's a word right here. If you don't just be patient and commune with God, son. Amen. Glory to God. God will carry us along. Praise the Lord. Well, I speak that, that which I have seen of my Father, and you do that which you have seen with your Father. So what Jesus said, what he saw the Father do, that's what he would do. That's vision. Vision. Then another scripture is uh, John 5, 19, I think it is. Amen. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself. Well, that's us. Amen. But we're not by ourselves. But what he sees the Father do, for what things soever he does, these also does the Son likewise. Yes. So Jesus, as the Son of Man, could see what the Father's vision was, and what his will was, what his thoughts was, what his mind was, what his work was, amen, what the Spirit was saying, and he just simply did it. Amen. Praise God. All we need is a good theologian to mess us up. <laughs> Much learning does make them mad. Oh, give us some childlike mustard seed faith, please. Yeah. Hallelujah. So what about us? When we're communing, you'll see things in the Spirit. You'll know things by the Spirit. Sometimes I see things that's going to happen before it happens. I saw a mini vision this morning that was supposed to happen, but the woman didn't bring her child. So what about that? Nothing I can do about it. You see, it's easy to miss what God has. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little fold in the hands. It's easy to get slothful about serving God. First off, you serve God 24-7, but you need to be in church every time you can. Yeah, that's right, man. Amen. That's right. Because it keeps you in your faith 
going. You need that fellowship with the believers. You need that corporate anointing experience. You need the communing of God's will in our midst. So the last scripture this morning is John 6, 6, 13. So here's the thing. Once we go through this, this little format, and not that it's the only way, but it's a place to start. God will reveal His will to us and then give us the grace to carry it out. I can't do it. I tell the Lord all the time, I'm insufficient. I don't have what it takes to really do what you're wanting me to do. I'm getting too old for this stuff. I need to retire. Buy me a little canoe out here on Grand Lake and just go fishing. Catch nothing. There's no retirement for the preacher. None. Ah, not till the Lord calls me out of here. Amen. So you understand what he's saying? I might, I, I might get 90 years old, but bless God, I can still preach him. <laughs> I shouldn't make fun about that because you never know what's going to happen. Right? I made fun about going to Africa one time about riding elephants. Three or four years later, I found myself on an airplane going to Africa. Dear Lord. So, hope I make it to 90, you know. But if not, it's okay. John 16, 30. 16, 13, I'll get it right. How many will accept God's grace today? So, when God gives us extra grace, and I ask God about every Sunday morning, Lord, I need a little extra grace here. Just a little extra grace, please. We're already in grace, but I need some extra grace, some extra ability to carry the cross that I have. Amen. And he gives it. It's a supernatural thing. How about when he the spirit of truth has come? He will guide you into all truth. That's what I'm talking about. Here comes the guide in the vision. All these things the Holy Spirit does. He will guide you into all truth. And he, uh, not she. Right. He... He shall not speak to himself. No, the Holy Spirit doesn't come and glorify himself. We don't worship the Holy Spirit. We worship in the Spirit. Amen. Whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. That's prophesying. That's the prophecy. That's the way the Holy Spirit works. He will guide us. He will show us things to come. He will help us in our everyday journey. He will give us short-term provision and long-term provision, but it only comes in the vision. How many has got it? How do you get it? It starts by communion with God. 